Hello there, I'm Serfancy and in this tutorial I will show you how to create blueprint randomizer. You can randomize any variable that you want, you can have random float or random vector. Let me show you how it is done. First thing we will do is to create macro library. That's basically sets of macros that you can use in all blueprints. So you don't have to create a macro or function in each of the blueprints separately, that would be really boring. So let's find here blueprints and here we have blueprint macro library. And let's create it just as an actor and let's call it random library now if you open it it's similar to blueprint interface on the right you have already created one macro so let's use this one and rename it to let's do just a random float that will be easiest and you don't really need macro for that but it will be good for demonstration so let's call it random float mac just to make sure that it's macro so first thing i will do is to move this details panel on the left so you can see what i'm doing let's create here input and output float so let's cut here variable and click on float this one will be just range and that output one will be just out. You can add an execution pin on anything like that. I don't really need that. So what I will do here is to right click here and put here a random float in range, move it all back. And what we will do here with our range is to first of all multiply it by minus one. And we are doing it simply because now if you just double click on this and connect it into max and this one on min, it will be set up in a way that if you put here, let's say 10, it will set our maximum range to 10 and our minimum range to minus 10 because we are multiplying it by minus 10. So like this, you can use just one number to speed things up and it will automatically multiply it to minus version of it. Let's connect it to out and see in some blueprint. And now let's create some blueprint that we will demonstrate it with. So let's right click here, create here blueprint class, actor, and let's call it just number printer. All right, open that. And now in our event graph, what you can do is right click and you should have here the new macro. But let's put here a random float mac. Here we go. And let's set the range to 50. So it should always give us number between 50 and between minus 50 and 50. You could of course create all this code inside this blueprint. But in that case, you would have to create it always from the scratch in each blueprint. And to demonstrate it, I just want to print it. So print string, let's print that float. And just to slow it down a bit, let's click on number printer self and set our tick interval to 0.2. That means it will tick uh, 10 times per second. So it will print 10 numbers every second. Let's put a blueprint in the game and click on play. And we have here our numbers and looks like it works pretty well. That was pretty basic, but now let me show you how we can use it to randomize location. For example, spawning something, spawning enemies and stuff like that. So back in random library, we'll create here another macro, click plus. And let's call it a random location mac. And what I'll do here in output, let's click here new parameter and let's set it to vector. And input, let's also use vector because we need some center where it should start. So let's use that. Call it in vector and out vector. Out vector. And let's add here one more variable in input. We will have to add here a range because we want to know in between which units it should move because we add, uh, and let's add an, an in it, an in it, in input, let's add one more, uh, in in, and in input, let's add one more, because we need to know in which range it should move, so let's add here a float, no, another name, I want to add here a float, come on, but you don't have to delete that, let's ignore that, and call it range. So, what I will do here is, move this all, from our out vector, let's put here make vector, and from our in vector, we will break that vector because we already have here presumably some vector, so we have to break it. And in this case, we have to make it because we don't have any blah blah blah. That's just terminology. And now for each of these flights, let's put here a plus. So float plus float. And in here, let's put here random range in float. And now again, take your range and put here float multiplied by float by minus one of course and before multiplying it let's set it to your max and you know what let's rename that range this one this one will be range for x and i will have for each axis different uh, different flow because it will be easier to work with and now of course connect it to x and now we have to do the same thing for all of these so control c control v all right now i have here my wonderful spaghetti monster that's literally spaghetti monster if you look at it i will quickly explain how it works just to be sure that everyone understands it so what happens here is that you get some input vector, it will break it, 
to each individual axis and with each of these axes it will add, it will add some number that you specified in here so let's say that if that vector is zero zero zeros i want to leave y and z on zeros then in that case it won't change anything because it will choose a random float between zero and zero which is zero but in x i will set it to 10 in that case it will give me a random number between minus 10 and 10 on x axis and it will be teleporting in between that which you will see in a moment actually Let's get rid of this, right click, put here a random location, Mac, and what we will do is add here something, let's, let's put here a cube, how big is it, oh, pretty big, doesn't matter, and on event tick I want to set its location, so give me cube, set world location, connect it in here and as out vector we will use this and let's say that I want it to move only up and down which means that I will set z to let's try 20 so it will work so it will move so it will move between minus 20 and 20 which is 40 units and now that I'm thinking about it it's actually a pretty stupid way how to demonstrate it because it would be always using that center of cube which is teleporting so that's stupid let's ignore that and for our world location we will use just our default cube so it will always use the center and move between minus 20 and 20 from it. And let's do actually 100. Because I think that 20 is not that much. All right, let's put it somewhere here and see it move. And look at that. Looks pretty do cool. cool. <laughs> what the f let's slow it down a bit. So we will disable key. Well, we won't disable it, but we will slow it down. So let's number print, let's set it to 0 0.5. And let's set it now only for, and now let's move it only on X axis and let's do 200 or maybe 300. Move it somewhere here. And look at that. It works pretty well. It always uses its random location. And you should be able also to stand on it and step on that like on your stepsister. Nice. All right, that's about it. I hope that you learned something. I think that randomizers and macro libraries in general can be pretty useful in your development and speed things up so i hope that you use them and that's it from me if you want project files for this they are on my patreon and a huge thank you to everyone who is already supporting me on patreon i truly do appreciate that and that's about it see ya around surfancy out